Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about all of the books that I've bought recently or been sent for review, which are scattered around me. Before I start talking about these, there were two things that I wanted to quickly mention. Next week, I'm gonna be filming my holiday Christmas gift guide. Normally, I do two of those specifically for books, and one of them, I will talk about the best gift type books that have come out in the past year that may be of interest to you. And then I always do a separate one where I ask you to send me your present buying dilemmas. You know, I need a gift for this person. They like these things. What book would you recommend? And then I answer as many of those as I can. I'm only going to be doing the personalized book recommendation video this year. So if you are hoping to get a book for someone this holiday season and you're a little bit stuck, leave me a comment down below saying, hi Jen, I need a gift for this person. They enjoy these things or they have liked these books and I will film a video where I answer as many of those as I possibly can. Plus, if you're looking for a present for yourself, you're very welcome to ask for a recommendation too. Speaking of holiday season, I have for the past three years done a really, really casual Vlogmas over on Patreon, which I'm gonna be doing again this year. Vlogmas is where you upload a video every day from the 1st to the 24th of December. I don't have the time to sit down and do these kind of videos every day on this channel, but I would like to get a little bit involved and it's been fun doing it previous years. So what I do is every day over on Patreon, I sit down, I open my computer and I film a video in one take using my webcam. So it's really old school, very chilled. And I answer questions that patrons have sent me or I'll speak about a specific topic that they've asked me to speak about. And I do that every day from the 1st to the 24th of December. The Vlogmas tier of my Patreon is $2. I will leave details down below. We have other stuff over on Patreon too, a book club behind the scenes, um, writing stuff. We have writing prompts, monthly text analysis, um, I will also be uploading, of course, all of my usual content to YouTube in December. So you're not missing out on anything. It's just if you want that extra little bit, you can head on over there. So should we talk about books? Let's talk about books. This book was in my most anticipated book releases for this autumn and winter, but it was towards the end of the video. And I said, I wasn't sure about it. And I was going to wait for the reviews to come in. And if they were good, then I would pick it up. I've seen a few reviews, but really it's just the premise has intrigued me and has been in the back of my head ever since I read it that I decided I was I was going to pick up a copy. This is Peronisi by Susanna Clark. She is the author of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell which I haven't read, but I know that it has such a dedicated following. Um, this is much shorter than that, which is why I think I have decided to pick this one up. And also I really love the premise. It's really high on magical realism. This is about a strange house where there are clouds in the ceilings. There are winds that rush along the corridors and there is someone there, Peronisi, who is doing an inventory of everything that is in the house that feels almost like its own universe forever expanding. I think it's gonna be really surreal and strange and I'm very much into that. I also bought a copy of Silver Sparrow by Tayari Jones. I loved her book, American Marriage, and I'm so thrilled that some of her backlist titles are now being published over here. This is about two sisters. Um, they are half sisters, so they have the same father, but only one of them knows that their father is the same person. So their father is a bigamist and one of the daughters has discovered this and she's made friends with her half sister, but she doesn't want to tell her yet. She doesn't want to shatter this illusion that she's created. She's just intrigued. And I think she's going to get deeper than she really means to. And obviously that secret becomes so weighted. That sounds extremely tense. She's brilliant at writing family dynamics. So I'm excited to read this. This month I wanted to read a book called, or I want to read a book because I still want to read it, called You Are Not Listening, which is about, well, I mean, I think the title says it all really, but I think it's primarily focused on social media and how we communicate or don't communicate online. And I'm keen to read that this month. And I thought I would read that alongside K Tempest on Connection. They are a poet and I really enjoy their work. This is their first bit of nonfiction. It's very short and I think it is about connection via creativity. I was sent this review copy of Greensmith by Alia Whiteley. This cover is so like old school sci-fi, I love it. 
I adored her book, The Beauty. Well, is adored the right word? I don't know. It's a post-apocalyptic book where women have turned into fungi and it is really creepy and very surreal and strange, but I loved it. I have her second novel, The Loosening Skin, on my shelf. That cover, the person on it, really reminds me of Amanda Palmer every time I look at that book. That's all I can see. It's very strange. I'll insert the cover here so you can you can see that. But this is her latest, which, as I said, is called Greensmith. And it's about a woman called Penelope who lives a small, dedicated life, collecting plants with the mysterious vice she inherited from her father. Then the enigmatic and charming horticulturist arrives in her garden, asking to see her collection. He tells her it could hold the key to stopping a terrible plague which is sweeping through the universe. So then she's taken into space... And she is shown the strange and fantastic where string powers interstellar travel, where birds fight terrible wars on the bodies of giants, where plants grow to the size of planets and they're hoping to save the day. This is a little bit out of my, I don't want to say comfort zone because I read lots of different things, but I don't tend to read a lot of books set in space, like intergalactic war and stuff like that. So I'm really intrigued by that. I was sent this by my friend Christopher. This is his new poetry collection, which is called The Late Sun. Um, Christopher was really kind to me when I was starting out on my writing career. We met at the Oldborough Poetry Festival and um, he was a bit of a mentor at the beginning of my career. So I'm always very keen to read his work. Um, then I was sent this from the lovely Matthew Sharapa, whose channel I will link in the description box down below. He sent me this as a thank you because I'd sent him a parcel of books. So now we're in this thing where we're going to have to keep on sending each other books until the end of time. I'm into it. This is Parakeet by Marie Helene Bertino. And this is a rather bizarre sounding novel about a woman who is about to get married, but then she's visited by a parakeet who she recognizes as a reincarnation or an embodiment of her grandmother. And the parakeet tells her, don't marry this person, go and find your brother instead. So that's what she does. And she sets off on this strange journey. So that sounds intriguing. I was also sent this for a review, which is called Sitting Pretty by Rebecca Talzig, the view from my ordinary, resilient, disabled body. I've been meaning to get to this for a while anyway, but I will be reading this in the next few weeks because I'm hosting a book club where we're discussing this book. Um, and it says in here that this is a series of essays where Rebecca is talking about growing up as a paralyzed girl during the 90s and early 2000s, how she saw herself or didn't see herself represented in the media, as well as just discussing her day-to-day -day life. I was also sent this book for review from the History Press. This is Woodland Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland by Lisa Schneider. And this is going on my bookcase of fairy tale research books. I will actually have a dedicated bookcase for that by next week, I think. I ordered a smaller mini bookcase this morning because there are piles of books over there relating to fairy tales that have been breeding without any input from me at all. <clears throat> um, and I decided that it was probably time to put them in their own space. So once I've put up that little bookcase, I'm gonna film a video talking to you about an updated fairy tale collection. And this will go on there. This one is specifically fairy tales, folk tales relating to trees. Then you may remember, speaking of trees, that a couple of months ago, I read a book called Weird Woods, which was published by the British Library. And it's a collection of old ghost stories set in haunted forests. And I really wanted to love it, but I didn't find it particularly scary. It was a little bit twee. So I decided to buy another one of their books because I do love the British Library Publishing and this is Spirits of the Season Christmas Hauntings which is edited by Tanya Kirk and I thought I wouldn't mind twee haunted Christmas stories because I don't necessarily need to be as scared as much when Christmas time rolls around. So I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy this collection more. It says festive cheer turns to maddening fear like that in this new collection of seasonal hauntings which includes the best christmas ghost stories from the 1860s to the 1940s the traditional trappings of the holiday are turned upside down as restless spirits disrupt the merry games of the living christmas trees teem with spiteful pagan presences and the devil himself treads the boards at the village pantomime i'm particularly intrigued by the village pantomime 
Then this one has been doing the rounds a lot and I'm really intrigued. This is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And I know that April loves this over at Getting Hooker With It. She says it's her favourite horror book. And if I'm not mistaken, her favourite book before this one took over was Bird Box by Josh Mailerman, which is probably the book that has scared me the most. And I loved it when I read it years ago so I'm hoping that I will love this too. This is about a woman called Patricia Campbell and she's part of a book club. She is quite bored but she loves her book club where they discuss true crime but then one day at her book club I believe that she is attacked and this introduces her to a man who she's really intrigued by but then children start disappearing on the other side of town and she's worried that this person that she has met is perhaps not the charming person that she thought he was. So I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm in the mood to be a little bit scared at the moment, I think. Another book that is one of my most anticipated releases this year is Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. This is just a non-fiction book all about whales. Rebecca became obsessed with them when she found a humpback whale who'd been washed up on her local beach in Australia and she wanted to learn all about them. So this is about the songs of whales, it's about the relationship that humans have with whales, it's about how we have hunted many of them to extinction. She talks about whales that are so rare they don't even have names. It says how do whales experience environmental change? Has our connection to these fabled animals been transformed by technology and what future awaits us and them. I also bought this collection of short stories by Giant Kikini which is called No Presence Please. It is published by Tilted Axis Press and it is translated by Teja Sweeney Nirinjana. This is a collection of short stories set in Mumbai. It says that it is exploring the sub-locales and spatial identities of Mumbai and the struggles of small town migrants. From Irani cafes, old cinema halls and local trains, Giant Kikini seeks out and illuminates moments and feelings of existential anxiety anxiety, pathos and tenderness in these prize winning stories because this won the um, DC Prize for South Asian Literature. I then bought these two books which I'm really intrigued by. They come as a pair, well you buy them individually but they are a pair and you can read them in any order. Mrs Bridge and Mr Bridge kind of I see that hers is much shorter than his. But these are both by Evan S. Connell and these are two novels about two sides of the same marriage. So Mrs. Bridge is a housewife and mother in Kansas City, bringing up her three children and making a home for her husband, Walter. She shops, plays bridge and goes to the country club. But as time passes, she finds that her life is unfulfilling and she cannot even ask herself the questions that trouble her. And while the children grow up and become strangers to her, Mrs. Bridge, kind yet bigoted, rich yet simple, is left uncertain of her place in the world. Walter Bridge, husband to India and father to three, is a successful lawyer in a Kansas suburb. The daily dramas of his life only serve to illuminate his prejudice, self-doubts and narrow outlook. His Christmas gifts to the family are stock certificates, which he immediately takes back to manage on their behalf. Yet he is also kind and charitable, loving his wife while never able to tell her so. So these are two, I think, quite bigoted people who are quite privileged and they don't communicate with each other. And this is the story of their lives. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna love these people, but I am intrigued by the premise of the books themselves. And finally, I bought a few books from Tara Books. This was my present to myself for finishing my latest book. They are a publisher in India. They make the most beautiful books and some of them are hand bound, including this one, which is called Beasts of India. These have colour plates inside showing different illustrations of different animals that you would find in India which have been illustrated by um, different artists in different regions of the country. I think my favourite in here is uh, the elephant which is near the end. The colours are just absolutely stunning. Um, they also come with this print which is fab, you can put this on your wall. In fact, if you wanted to unpick the stitching, because as I said, this is hand bound, lots of these would make amazing prints um, to go on your wall. And also they do sell prints of these books too. I'll link their website in the description box down below. I think that was the only hand bound one that I bought. So these ones are more expensive than the other ones because they are hand bound and they are limited editions. So this one I think was 
I think it was 20 pounds. So it is a, a lot more expensive. The other ones are about six, seven pounds. So what you would expect to pay for a picture book. So we've got Mother Steals a Bicycle. Again, it has beautiful illustrations inside like this. This is stories that her mother is telling her child all the mischief that she got up to when she was a girl. This is the Petua Pinocchio. So this is an Indian version of Pinocchio, um, which is fully illustrated. There we go, that's one of the colored plates. I bought one, two, three, which is a counting book. Um, and this one again has beautiful illustrations in it and will help young children to count. Maybe you think it's strange that I'm buying these books when I definitely do know how to count, but I do collect children's books. I say it's research because I write for children and that is part of it, but I am also, I suppose, collecting books for future children's libraries, but also just for myself because I want to appreciate the work that has gone into these amazing books. This is a collection of folk tales called Speaking to an Elephant. And again, has amazing illustrations inside. And final two picture books, this is Tiger on a Tree. This one describes itself as a comic drama. And again, it has printing inside. And then finally, this one is Tale Tale by Anushka Ravashankar. And this is about the different tales of animals and all the different shapes that they come in and again it has fantastic illustrations in fact the color palette in this one reminds me a little bit of the fox and the star so i will link tara books in the description box down below because i think that they are absolutely amazing and i love them very much so those are all the books that i wanted to talk to you about today as i mentioned at the beginning of this video i'm going to be filming my holiday book gift guide next week so if you have any requests for book recommendations if you're buying gifts for relatives or friends or you would like to buy a book for yourself leave those requests in a comment down below and i'm also doing as i said a very informal vlogmas over on patreon which is two dollars for the whole of december and if you're interested in signing up for that I will link that in the description box down below as well. I hope you're all having a great week and I will speak to you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.